There's a tool in Photoshop CS3 that surprisingly not everybody knows about. And it's a tool that can be used to speed up and or automate just about any task in your own personal workflow. This tool is called the Image Processor. While the Image Processor can be accessed through Photoshop, 90% of the time you'll be using it from Bridge. And the most common scenario is after you've just corrected a large batch or large folder of raw files and you need to convert them into JPEGs for proofs. So I'm only going to select these four, but you could run, you could use the image processor to convert this entire folder of raw files here. But either with one or four or the entire folder selected, so you go up to tools and down to Photoshop, bring up the image processor and it'll open up Photoshop because this actually is part of Photoshop. And it's broken down into four pretty easy to understand sections. The first of which, select the images to process. Since we just selected images from Bridge and opened up the image processor, it has this process files from Bridge only, and you can see where there are four currently selected. In section two, you need to select a save location, which can either be in the same location or a new fold, select a new folder. Now, section three is where you can save your files as a JPEG. So if you need to save them as a JPEG for proofing, here's where you do it. But you can also save them as TIFFs. So say there were a smaller folder of images that you needed to retouch, then you'd probably want to save those as TIFFs as well. And even if you, you can also save them as PSD, that's also an option. If you checked all three and ran the image processor, it would save all the images as a PSD, a JPEG, and a TIFF. And it would create each of those subfolders. But let's get back to the proof scenario, and I just want to convert my raw files to JPEGs to bring to a lab to have printed at like a 4x6 size. So I don't really need the PSD or the TIFF at this time. And it's important to note that this resize to fit option is available for all formats. But we're just going to look right now at the JPEGs. By clicking this, you enter in a value for the width and the height in pixels, and Photoshop will resize each image to be no longer than 1600 pixels width-wise or no longer than 1600 pixels height-wise. Because if you're just getting a 4x6, you don't need an image that's 4000 pixels by 2000 pixels. It's just a large file. Right here under the quality for the JPEGs, you can set the quality from about 8 or 9. Recommend at least 9. And then if you need to, if your images are in Adobe 98, you can check this convert to profile or convert profile to sRGB to actually convert them to sRGB since most labs operate in the sRGB workspace. And after you've made all your selections, down here in the preferences section, if you check the run action, you can actually run an action on all those fi files as well. So it'll resave, convert to profile, resize, and you can run an action. So on the left here are the action sets, and then on the right are the individual actions. So I'm not going to run a vignette on all these, but the option is there. And then lastly, you definitely need to include your ICC profile. That way it'll embed the sRGB, sRGB profile into your files. Now when I click Run, Photoshop will go through and perform all those tasks that I asked of it. And if you pop on over to your hard drive, see that you now have a new JPEG subfolder created by Image Processor. But before we end here, I'll just show you how to get to it from Photoshop, just in case you need to, for example, You've brought a, uh, several files to a lab to have printed, and your profile is all Adobe 98. When your lab says 
hey, we need you to convert these to sRGB. Quick and easy way to do that is to use the image processor, which in Photoshop is located under the file, and then scripts, and then you have image processor. Then you would select the images, you would select your folder where the images reside on your hard drive, select a new save location, and then save them as JPEG. You might not need to resize them, but you definitely need to just check the convert profile to sRGB. And the image processor will convert that entire folder of Adobe 98 images into sRGB. And after you've mas mastered the image processor, be sure to check out Dr. Brown's 123 process. It's a free plugin and there's a link on this website and it's a much improved version of the image processor with lots of extra features and options.